So as a designer maker and jeweler, I moved from handmaking to also working digitally. This started in 1990 for laser cutting refractory metals, which is titanium. You can't hear me. Is that better? Right. Ooh. Okay. This started in 1990 for laser cutting refractory metals, then on to 3D CAD for 3D printing eight years later, into research to now running a software development company. What enabled these shifts is good in-depth networking, as this is essential to find the super people, the techies and computer scientists who've collaborated with me. So these STEAM collaborations have led to the development of highly accessible software programs that use the sensation of 3D touch to give painless access to 3D technologies and enhance designing and learning. Next one, please. Uh, I struggled to learn and use CAD programs, and my move into research at Edinburgh College of Art was initially to investigate 3D CAD to find one more suited to how designer makers work. Then with an AHRC-funded research collaboration and a proof of concept project, we explored haptics as potentially a better interface for designing in digitally in 3D. So haptics means touch in this context feeling, touching virtual things in three dimensions, that is, you know, round the back as well. So we use our senses of touch and proprioception to understand and interact with our real world. Yet our digital environment, a flat screen, two-dimensional mouse, etc., lack natural three-dimensional sensory feedback, so essential for engagement and immersion. So haptic devices provide force feedback, which gives very acceptable sense of touch and also movement in 3D. And the method of interaction is more coherent. So these are four haptic devices. Oh, have I missed one? Well, I've missed the slide, never mind. It was actually about my research. So following the proof of concept stage, Anarchic 3D as a software development company specializing in haptics was founded in 2007, so it's nearly 10 years. And that was by myself and Xiao Xing Xiao, our computer scientist and programmer. By combining our expertise and search research findings, we created a remarkable haptic 3D modeling package, especially for designer makers and artists. So it's quick to use, easy to learn, immersive, huge fun with serendipity as a default. So our system taps into the way that we naturally interact with and manipulate things through touch and movement. We work hard to get the interaction coherent and to be as non-disruptive as possible to encourage flow. The interface is non-complex as we as we don't need the very many options that CAD supplies. And it's right brain thinking and different from CAD, which is left brain thinking. So it works for people who struggle with CAD, yet want to access 3D technologies, such as 3D printing. So the protocols for exporting to 3D printing are all there too. It's an award winner. Best consumer software at the London 3D Print Shows Global Awards in 2013. We're now working on version 3.1, and one of my tasks is testing to find bugs. And I love using it, and I love seeing how other creatives use it. These 3D printed pieces of jewelry are by Birgit Larkin, Elizabeth Armour, and Jenna Delaney, and they demonstrate the capacity of our software for designers to develop their own styles. Make sure I'm on the same one. So to fully appreciate the potential of 3D haptics for 3D modeling, our system really has to be tried. That's why I brought it with me. For Edinburgh's first makeshift do event, I joined with colleagues at Napier University to host two workshops. Participants could combine fiber optics and electronics using Arduino and use 3D print modeling kit, that's our one, to create something to 3D print on Ultimakers using thermochromic uh, filaments. 
and a tweet from Amy Coolstead, who was there, she said, amazing day at CC Makeshift Do. Got to use a 3D software, 3D printer, responsive cloud, and etch into fiber optics. So there was a lot of excitement. Um, I've got a feeling my other video is not going to work either, which will be a pity. As haptics has so much potential in other fields, Touchable Universe is a collaborative a collaboration to create a middleware platform to enable developers to rapidly build haptics into their own programs, for example, to enhance learning in schools. I was going to show you this video, but we can try it. So we are a collection of designers, computer scientists, technologists, learning consultants, teachers, marketing people, and a business colleague, and the project is funded by Innovate UK. So give, it, give it a try. Uh, don't think I'm going to get it going. Okay, let's let's leave it because I'll run out of me ten minutes, won't I? You may do. <laughs> okay, so the first apps we're building to test both the platform and use were suggested by teachers as difficult concepts to teach. So for starters, we've got um, atomic forces and principles of physics and chemistry and also language syntax, which I don't have a slide up here of it yet. Teachers can build their own digital models too, for example, to demonstrate what smoking does to our lungs. So the pink healthy um, lung feels soft. It actually does feel soft and spongy to touch, whereas the smoker's lung is hard and scarred and feels horrible. And also, kids are building cases for their micro bits, their BBC micro bits. And in art and design and craft, they can access 3D printing on their own artistic terms. They don't have to go into CAD. My last one. <laughs> if I get it right the right way. OK. So I do have kit with me, and also a range of 3D printed objects to handle in a variety of materials using different printing processes. Yellow Chrome Books have my book, Digital Craft on Sale, and it's about how designer makers with all their practical, tacit and explicit knowledge on materials and making are bringing digital text, tech into their practice. And that's important. So thank you all very much indeed.